Hi, I'm Char, that's Carl, and this is Dieting with a Life. Today, we're gonna to talk about HGH and a little bit of his leftover fat fast because that kind of rolls into our HGH conversation. Yes. Tune in. I got my HGH scores back from my fat fast. Yes, you did. My first, my baseline, which was not fasting, was 0.8. Yes. Which is fairly, it's okay. It's mm -hmm. average. Yeah. Yep. It's average. Now, you remember we did the video on the, the um, HGH and DHEA and Have we metformin. found immortality? Yeah, on the, this is part of the mor mortality thing is that they were able to reverse the epigenetic clock, which is your inside telomeres and stuff, your telomere length. No, it actually mm. is not. It's not your telomere length, what is it? No. So the epigenetic clock, what it is, is that your DNA is all made up of uh, four bits, mm -hmm. A, C, G, and T. And there's histones between those bits, but there is also a sheath around it. And that sheath is the epigenome. Oh, okay. And what they can do is that they can measure the degradation of that sheath as it relates to aging. genetic aging. Okay. And that's so how they do it. aging by years, but genetic aging. Biological age. Right. Yes, not time. And as that sheath degrades, you're more susceptible to cancer and diseases, diseases. because genes, diseases. genes yeah. will not switch on and off properly because they don't receive right. the right signals. And you get some damage in there, some DNA damage, and that's... Um, they're thinking that the DNA damage is not as much um, for longer life, of course, like radiation or something like that. I mean, you know, real hard damage, right. but... Um, a lot of that DNA factor, damage but... can be repaired. Oh, well, yeah, with autophagy, absolutely. And mm -hmm. we do that daily. We take um, Respiritrol and NMN. NR. NR, yeah. Mm -hmm. we take Which NR, is a precursor for NMN. Which is a precursor to NMN. And then um, we take that each morning so that, that way we get in two to three hours of autophagy with the, with the um, N NR, NMN. Uh, and the NR, that actually has a four to five hour half-life in the body. Mm -hmm. So you're probably going to get roughly four to five hours of autophagy a day, which is pretty good. Yep. Um, that's four to five hours that your body's cleaning up all the damage. Um, that's what I got the skin results for and stuff, the, the reduction of wrinkles and, and all that. So I highly recommend 500 milligrams of resveratrol, um, one milligram of the NMN, and then if your glucose is really high, I recommend doing exogenous ketones to bring that down about 10 mm -hmm. points. Um, because one of the things that suppresses mTOR is lower glucose. So we'll put those links in this video. I know we have them in the other one, um, but we'll put those links in this video as well, the, the respiratrol and stuff. So where you, you know where you can find it. Um, but HGH. The interesting thing about my HGH was I did a five-day fat fast where I eat like 100% or as close to 100% fat as I can get it. And one, my glucose is, was low and so was his. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, yours, even though you've been off of it for a few days, still hasn't gone into pre-diabetic the way you were. Yeah. So you, you got to retain a little bit that. But it is creeping up, so I think until you can get your body where it needs to be, yeah. you probably need to do that, you know, fasting once a week, I know. <laughs> if you wanted to keep it there, you would. He probably won't. But he's gonna help me out with his HGH testing because yes, he is, because Dr. Sinclair would like for that to be repeated because I got a 60% increase in my HGH, which is exciting. Yes, because, that is very exciting. And now let me tell you, HGH injections would cost you eight to $10,000 a year. So if I can do even a little bit of the same, Yep. And it be because I just ate fat for a few days out of the month. Um, well, I think I mean, even even more than the fat, I think that if you're a little bit younger and you can do that three to five day fast, 
the the fasting is going to raise your natural HGH. It is, but I mean, I'm not a little younger. I'm a lot older, and yeah. it still wrote, wrote, you know, rose my HGH. So, um, and you're right. If you're younger, I'm sure you would get a much more significant rise. Mm -hmm. But um, even for us older folks, <laughs> significantly exactly. older, exactly. Then um, I, I think it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Because I think it, you know, I may not get enough um, to turn back my epigenetic clock by two and a half years like they did, um, but maybe but you I never can know. slow it down. Or... At least we can get it tested now. Right, right, right. So I do plan on doing that. I'm gonna. We have another. Uh, Dr. Sinclair has re has asked me if I think it can be replicated, and so we're going to try to replicate that. Um, that test, which is why I may have to use my guinea pig. Because mm -hmm. um, an N of one is not really scientific, it's no. anecdotal. Yes. But an N of two is a little bit closer. A little bit closer, not really great, but at least yeah. it's a base. I mean, if you can get an N of 50. Then you're really good. Then you're rocking some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So if 50 people want to do it too, let me know. Absolutely, yeah. Leave a comment. It's it's a it's an HGH blood draw. You can actually get it at healthlabs.com, and the, you can schedule it at a local lab. Um, yeah. It's wonderful to be able to say, "Hey, I, I did nothing but eat differently, and I increased my HGH by sixty yeah, percent." Yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's a good not thing. A small. That's not a small accomplishment. That's a pretty good. You know, it's so. And I did make sure that the majority of all of the factors were out. I didn't do a lot of exercise because that's going to use your HGH. Mm -hmm. I also did the test at the same time, both times. Mm -hmm. So because, you know, how you sleep, everything else affects HGH. But I don't think sleep is going to affect HGH to 60% mark. That's quite, that's, it's not really after broad. you're awake. No, no, that's really broad. Yeah. So, um, but that's really exciting. And it is really exciting that you actually got to keep a lot of your... Some. Some, yeah. Some of it. Well, your, your glucose was 96 this evening mm -hmm. and your ketones were 0.9. Yeah. Yeah. So not so, great. No, and, and, and some of that is the reduction in fat because your, your body, your liver needs the, that fat to create those ketones. And you like to be real carnivore. Yeah. Real carnivore. Like he'll eat just nothing but hamburger patties, which is great for weight loss and stuff, but um, not too so, much protein, too much protein, too much not protein. enough fat. Yeah. yeah. So you have to you have to really hit that 75, 70 to 75 percent mark on fat to ramp those ketones up. So and you tend to not mm -hmm. you eat closer to 40, 45 percent fat. And lots of protein. Lots of protein. And like zero carbs. No carbs. Yeah. Like none, none. at all. No. Unless I cook cauliflower rice, he doesn't usually eat carbs. No. Um, and I haven't cooked it here lately because, well, I've been fat fasting. But super exciting news, and I think you guys are going to really enjoy finding out about his HGH markers. Because let me tell you guys, one of the things that they were doing this for was to reduce PSA scores. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. they did see that, mm -hmm. that it did that. Do you remember what the percentage was on that? No, I don't. That was, that was pretty impressive. It was impressive, pretty significant though. though. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty impressive though. So, um, you know, that high HGH is, is just like when we were 20. It's, but you know, I'm a little scared to take HGH injections when it's not my own HGH. Well, if you can make it in your body, it's always going to be better. I know, you know, and they, they have a propensity to cause diabetes and stuff, and I'm just not down with diabetes. Yeah, well, that's why they had the DHEA and the metformin. We still don't know the association of the link between those three things that cause the epigenetic clock to go back. So, yeah, it so, could be just one. It could be the interaction of the three or just a couple or something else. So Completely. my takeaway from this is what we've learned, um, we can use, instead of using like what I did the last time, I did the nine day water fast and that was great for my body and it really taught my body how to make ketones and get into a good state and I got a lot of good autophagy out of it. But what I've learned with the fat fasting is, is that I can do the exact same thing 
and use fat fasting and it's not near as miserable for me mm -hmm. as just no food so that was really nice you yep. know to be able to use fat to to fill the hole mm -hmm. and 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 not feel like i was well dying. you don't get that hunger either with a fat fast but on your fifth day you kind of did you you got a little shaky and and just as if i what i would probably have felt like on a water fast after about five days yeah five days was not a good day i had to take extra calories in which kind of hosed stuff and the sixth day i was completely broken out of the fast so i never well, got it, to seven but for my first fast making it to five days okay so one of the things that i wanted to mention was on your fat fast um like when i do my fat fast i eat about 15 1600 calories every day yeah and i was at 300. yeah so yeah. um and and i see the exact same results at 1600 calories a day as i would see if i was water fasting so I, I think, you know, when you do the, the test for Dr. Sinclair, maybe you could raise those up and see if you can get better numbers if your calories are more and you, you've provided your body with more fat to make those ketones. Yeah, we'll work it out. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea just because I think your body needs that fat. In fact, I was just watching a Dr. Ba's video in our, our her fast that she was doing and and she had fat right before her or mct oil which is fat right before her fast and her numbers were better than she's ever seen mm -hmm. so i really think your body needs that fat to create those ketones i really do um and i think you know we've in, in keto we've we're, we're starting to see more movement towards carnivore and everything else and i think that's great if you're in a maintenance mode um but if you're looking for autophagy and, and for those ketones and, and low blood sugars, I really think that um, fat's your way to go. Yeah. I mean, I'm not seeing any glucose rise or anything else. And no, my, and I didn't either. Yeah, and my platelets and everything else are clearly in autophagy range for yeah. me. I just think for, uh, for me at that point in time, with my current lifestyle, it was just way too few calories for a first fast, especially for a seven day fast. Oh yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. And, and, and I don't even think, you know, I don't even think, I just don't think it's required. You know, the minimal calorie thing, I don't think it's required. I think your body loves having that extra well, fat. Well, no, right? there, there's, some, there's some science behind you have to be hungry. You, you have to stress your body um, for certain pathways to activate. That's true, but is it a hunger stressor that you're looking yes. for? Is it, or is it a deficiency stressor that you're looking no, for? No, you're looking for a hunger stressor. Something that tells your body, I am lacking something. So pathways switch into more of a survival mode and they do things differently when they know that you're hungry and they don't know if they're getting food or not. See, now... Walter Longo. Interestingly enough, we probably need to run a, a, a blood test and course done on when I'm not doing anything, but I'm fasted for actually five days and actually, mm -hmm. and you know, regular fasted where water fast, mm -hmm. um, where I do the water fast and, and then I take my markers on the fifth day and see what those HGH scores would possibly be. Did they ramp up? Mm -hmm. Did they not? You know, because I know my my glucose and my ketones are almost identical when I do water fasting as opposed to when I fat fast. They're both the same. Mm -hmm. So, and my platelets are the same. And you know, uh, IGF one is similar. Is similar, yeah. yeah. But you know, there's not a whole lot of rise or, or drop in IGF one. Well, there's ten percent. Yeah, it's ten percent. It's pretty low though. So. I don't know, is, is, you know, and that's something that we need to look at, is 10% enough? It may be, but, you know, like I say, I get, now my platelets are like from 202 to like 258, so there's a much larger deviation in platelets mm -hmm. than there is an IGF-1. Yeah. And IGF-1, if you don't know, is insulin growth factor, and if that's, that's the upstream of mTOR, which means um, if you've got that high, then your autophagy level is low. 
Mm-hmm. So, and, and I've done markers where I've seen the clear curve in whether or not I'm in autophagy and platelets will be the exact opposite curve of that. Platelets are actually low, uh, no, high when you're in autophagy and low when you're not. And IGF-1 is the exact opposite, low in autophagy and high when you're not. So anyhow, that was probably all going to be edited out because it's irrelevant. <laughs> Just my scientific ramble. Um, but really excited. Um, it was really great to have a very short, brief conversation with yes. Dr. David Sinclair. Um, and we got the book today. We did Lifespan. get his book, Lifespan. And so far, it is riveting. If you can get it, get it. Absolutely. I got it on audio. Be a link down in the Watch a Hoosie. Yeah, and Amazon. I got a link. I got I got it via audio because Audible because I don't have any time. To yeah, read. and I got the hardcover. He gets the hardcover. Um, but we got it in the mail today, and we've been reading it, and it is phenomenal. So um, super excited to continue that. Mm-hmm. And maybe I'll learn something. And do more blood probably tests. probably and do more yeah. blood tests yeah so all right well thanks for watching guys so like share subscribe push buttons do things and we'll be back